It's time for David's joke. He says he's got a joke. He's gonna tell us that joke. Let's hear that joke. It David. wasn't. It wasn't a joke. Okay. It was uh, Daniel. I have a question for you. Yeah. What's up? Yes or no? Uh, did you pick this show because you believe that Brandon can't read? Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Bottle Episodes. <laughs> I have... Wait, I, well, when do I speak? Do I speak yet? Yeah, whatever it's, you want. I mean, you can't read. Might as well let you yeah, speak. Not, I can't read! <laughs> I, I realize that one of the... <laughs> Hi, Brandon Gord. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, well, some podcasts... This is, just so you know, some podcasts... I don't know if you're aware of this. There are other podcasts out there. And in some of them, they when they bring the guest on, they're like, our next guest is so funny and so talented and we are so happy to have him here tonight we are just so lucky they are a writer a director a producer and we love them and i come down here and and our next day. guest is a ward of the state <laughs> <laughs> and our next guest cannot read i've done i think i did the math i've done five of these now right okay and three of them we're educational podcasts, <laughs> educational shows, and two of them were specific like, hey, could you learn to use the library? Do you need to be able to read? And yeah. I'm like, they tried to, I will read, and I want to, I want to, you point to any word in here, I swear to God, I'll read it. <laughs> Anyone who just wondered, I did point at the word Panasonic. <laughs> It's a tough one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> one, dude, like a... Daniel, that one's far away. You can't. So that's no, nah, I saw all those letters. I just didn't know what they did. <laughs> uh, hello, welcome to Bottle Episodes. It's the podcast where we watch bad TV shows. We watch the pilot episode, and then we watch the highest rated episode to see if it ever got better. I'm Daniel Crow. I'm David Piccolomini. You've already week... been our guest, Mr. Illiterate himself, <laughs> Brandon <God>. Gorin. <laughs> I was so... I can read. About <laughs> halfway through this episode, I was like, that motherfucker thinks I can't read. <laughs> I will say this. I think the show made me worse at reading. Uh, let's, yeah, the show is Learn to Read. It is uh, produced by <laughs> PBS. PBS and Wally Amos. <laughs> uh, the creator of Famous Amos Cookies. <laughs> Which. I did no research after I watched this. I feel bad about it, but I, like, I did some research. It's one of those things. Like, it, was he in other stuff? Is this was this his pet project? Could he not read? And I then think it he might have been in the commercials at the time, so he might have been recognizable to people. Mm -hmm. He also made his fortune, which he used to start the cookie company. He was uh, a big time Hollywood agent. Oh, oh, so like what? not the yeah, story so I expected. He was like the first black agent at CAA or whatever. And, <laughs> so and, that's you know, one why of those he's big famous. Agents, well, the thing was, they were like, "Hey, we should have a black agent since so many big musicians are black. Then they'll go to us instead." And it did work. But the way he got people to be his clients is he would make the cookies and send them to them. <laughs> and then, like Marvin Gaye would be in the press, and be like, "My agent makes the best cookies." This is a this is wild. So I'm so it happy. led to him opening a cookie shop that Marvin Gaye gave him money for. And it took off from there. So he was able to read. <laughs> the whole time. Whole time. He was able to read, but it was just his passion to teach adults how to read. So I want to say, from a moral perspective, this is the best show we've ever watched. From a teaching people to read perspective, it's one of the worst we've ever watched. <laughs> I, there's no way anyone learned to read from this thing. It is... A f you mean those felons they had interviews? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be, I, I would like to ever know that this is specifically a show to teach adults that don't know how to read how to read. This is not a show for children to learn how to read. And they they had to like repeatedly be like, okay, cool, we're gonna go through some letters. Here we go. We're gonna go. Here's uh, let's do a word. Pat, P A T. Pat, you're nailing this. Cat, C A T. Great. Matt, M A T. You got this. And then they'd stop me like, we get this is usually for kids, but you got to start yeah, somewhere. They're so, Please don't quit right they're now. They're so <laughs> rude to all of the people. I have numerous problems with how they teach people how to read in this show. I... And we'll, we'll get to them all. But <laughs> it's just so misguided in a hundred different ways. I'm so good. I'm so glad because I, I watched the episode. 
both episodes. And the first one is just kind of an infomercial. It, it promises a lot. It, it promises it, it that really, this show is going to be a lot of fun. And then when you actually get to another episode outside of it, you're like, this sucks so dude, much. It, <laughs> it, it reminded me of, it might have been an SAT prep, um, where you would have to like do stuff, and every like three pages, there would be like a bad New Yorker comic. Did you guys, y'all ever have that? No. Oh, yeah, where it just randomly, it's like... Yeah, it was just like every like, I, I took an SAT prep, and uh, every like five pages will be like York. It's the it's the joke everyone makes funny fun of. It's like a square is looking at a circle, and the square is like you have no point, and the circle is like that's actually really hurtful. I've been going through a lot lately. Can you please not say that? Every like ten, this is the visual version of that. I think you're giving this <laughs> too much. Yeah. Credit. That- you just described a, an anti-comedy can, joke. Yeah. This is... Can I describe their method to teach people to read? Because they go in assuming you have more knowledge than I would imagine a lot of the people do. This is for genuinely illiterate people. And at at certain points in the show, they're like, hey, you know the alphabet song? A, B, C, you know, you know it. They just stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? People have tuned in. To tr- they want your help. <laughs> they need and there's so many ones with this. Ah, you know what I'm talking. It's like me trying to describe one of those dumb underground bands I like <laughs> to you, David. Yeah. Because I'm just like, have you heard of Mr. Bungle? And you're like, no. I'm like, okay, well, imagine like Mr. Bungle, but like, do you know the 90s industrial hip hop act Dalek? And you're like, no. Like, okay, but imagine like if Mr. Bungle and Dalek <laughs> combined. <laughs> and, and can you imagine what that would sound like? You're like, no. <laughs> That's how they try to teach people to read. I'm in still this. trying to learn my ABCs. I'm going to yeah. be honest. <laughs> That that section was, was also I Daniel. How would Mr. Bungle and Dalek singing the ABCs go? Um, you know, it wouldn't sound normal. It would just be. It would actually probably be just this podcast. Yeah. It's just it's so <laughs> far out there. Wait, are what we Mr. Mi- Bungle? Wait, can we take yeah. a step back a little bit? What can we do? What is Mr. Bungle and Dalek like? What is that group you're trying to explain? No one. I was just playing okay. two bands that came to my mind. That's amazing. It probably be a pretty good band. That sounds pretty fun. Like it's gonna have a nice little like like. I guess uh, it might be death bass. groups. Uh, I don't see the I don't uh, I don't see the Mr. Bungle. That one song that they did with uh, Les Claypool. Did they do one song? With they Les did Claypool? a song with Les Claypool. That must be later. Death Grips. It was I, just a single. Not on any album. Yeah, that makes sense. I follow Death Grips, but not that closely. Um. So anyway, anyway, learning to read. Anyway, <laughs> learn to read. <laughs> okay, so learn to read. Uh, stars. Let's just let's start off with how it opens. It opens with, I'm, and we're let's yeah. make a disclaimer. This person is now Caitlyn Jenner. And the, yes. referring to them in the time now, we will always say Caitlyn. But I think the character in the show sh- will be referred to as Bruce. I, and it is specifically relevant at one point that when this show was made, their name is Bruce. That was an accidental real like, oh my God moment. Like yeah. there was a real, like, I don't want to dead name anybody, but they dead name Caitlyn Jenner so hard that they pull out the dead name, physically show it to but you. The, the crazy thing is why we need to bring up that at the time Caitlyn Jenner was known as Bruce is because when you're trying to teach people to read, they pull out their name and they're like, this is my name. And they show it and like it's pronounced Baruski. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, dude? <laughs> what? It's just people who Why is it literally the word they can't That's read. That's the first word they try to teach people. <laughs> in episode one, by the way, it's like 10 minutes into episode one before they teach anyone to learn. <laughs> There's a good five minutes of being like, when I won the Olympic gold for there, the Decathlon, shut yeah. up. Teach people there to were read. A lot, there was a lot of footage of Bruce Jenner winning different a lot. events. <laughs> that, it was in their contracts. That was a real, like, hey, you know me. I'm Bruce Jenner. I won this and this. Anyway, reading's hard as fuck. And you're like, what do those things have in common, oh, dude? Yeah, it was, no, he literally, he goes, I can't read. Or I couldn't read in school. They thought I was all stupid. And then I found sports. Yeah, he was specifically dyslexic. And I'm always curious of like when we started calling people dyslexic. Cause it, keeps, it was invented for this show. It was invented for, <laughs> like Bruce Jenner invented dyslexia. Um, it's a wild thing that, and also in the first episode, we are hanging out with Famous Amos. We're hanging out with Jenner. For like a while. Famous Amos is an afterthought in the first episode. It's his creation. It was his passion. He apparently went broke trying to teach adults to read. Really? Like he spent all of his money on adult literacy programs 
to, and he had, he had sold the cookie company and he had to try to start another cookie company later in life. It didn't work well. He went on Shark Tank with it. He was like, hey, I'm Famous Amos. And like, that's nice. He's like, do you want to buy my cookies? And I'm like, no. We already have Famous Amos. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, it was just like Amos Hawaiian cookies or whatever. So uh, Amos. Uh, I should note, by the way, this show has 1.4 on IMDb. Yeah. People hate it. People hate it. But like, who has watched it other than illiterate people? Which means people, when they learned how to read, <laughs> the first thing they did was go on IMDb, <laughs> click one star, and go, this didn't help at all. <laughs> I think one of the one of the big problems they with this They had to go show, learn to read from a different program. Just so that they could besmirch this show. I hate this show so much. I have to learn to, I will learn to write. But one of the big problems with this show, at least for me, God, it's so weird to talk about this, but they don't know what level... The people who are watching it are. That's what I'm saying. They just throw them in the deep end immediately. Yeah, they throw them in the deep end while also being like, dude, we probably know. You probably know what stop means. Yeah. It's not a big deal. You know stop. S-D-O-P. Easy. Very easy. And then, and I'm going to jump ahead, but it's all I can think about. Is it is it in see, uh, the second episode where they're like, man, if you learn how to read, you can work in a factory. And I'm yes. like, that's... Yeah, fucking yeah. heartbreaking. That's <laughs> so sad. To be like, it's fine to work a shift. I am. Pr- it is pro union. I'll give them that. It is pro union. That rules. But like, yeah, United Auto Workers for in there. Some of the words that they teach the people to learn how to read are real judgy <laughs> towards what they imagine like the lifestyle of a illiterate adults is. <laughs> Where they're like, you p as in pain pills. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> S as in sex or smoke. <laughs> sex and smoke are two of them. And when they dropped that at, that sex, I was like, oh, man. That's a real, like, I don't know how to explain this, but it's a very 1980s way we view sex. Like, we're going to talk about it and be real honest and upfront for exactly one word. We're just going to say the sex ex- here. Let's look, let's uh, figure out how the. I the, love how they were like kids. Don't watch this reading show. This this show is for adults. But the other thing is like X is a letter you introduce pretty late when you're teaching kids how to read, <laughs> and it's just there at the start, just so they can be like, ha, ha, ha. "Bet you want to learn how to read sex? Am I right?" Well, now you have me. Uh, yeah, you you have my uh, attention. Uh, oh, uh, just this is just a different thing, but. Uh, Here's all the uh, shows uh, Famous Amos has been in. I'm very excited about this list. All right. Uh, starting off uh, with the most recent one in 2012. Shark, Shark Tank. Tank. The Office. Oh. Really? Yeah. That's... He's apparently in one episode of season eight of The Office. That feels very season eight. Is that is that after Steve Carell quit? Uh, yeah, I think. Is that the Did last season? Did they bring season? him in as one of the bosses? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they had to be? They had to like the everyone that like gets on set all had to stop and be like, guys, we got a celebrity here today. Please, everyone, give it up. Famous Amos is here, and then and everyone had to like like boredly clap for Famous Amos. Yeah, They're like oh, that's great. And like there were cookies on set, but they were not the Famous Amos cookies because well, he, he gets sold no money that whole from thing. Those. It was his whatever Hawaiian cookie yeah, company. Cookie Kahuna. Yeah. Cookie Kahuna was on set and they were like, mm, this is good, Amos. This is really good. He was I, in a TV movie called Tracks with two X's. Boys will be boys. Learn to read. Taxi, and then the Jeffersons as man number one. You forgot one thing he was in. What? Because we looked this up earlier. It's on IMDb, but we can find no other information about it. Oh. A sequel series to learn to read. A soap opera called Another Page. <gasps> we can't find any further information about it. Oh, I want it so bad. It's oh. a soap opera. Used to show how reading skills are used in everyday situations. Yes. Just sometimes I forget that like. This isn't a lost media podcast, but you we, you just nudge open little lost media things. I'd love to find that. That yeah. I want so bad. Like there's an what was that TV show that we lost that we found out doesn't exist anymore? Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct. Yeah. And then the soap opera about reading, which is sounds like something I've seen. It's the show we should be covering right now. In by a the dream. Way. By I the think... way, by the way, the production company for uh another page yeah. was uh the Kentucky, it was Kentucky Public Broadcasting. Of course it was, yeah. Another page, just hit up the pod. We want it, We want you on the pod. Another the Kentucky page. Network. Nice. I'm begging you, okay? I will say another thing about Famous Amos, which is I didn't know what he looked like before. Didn't expect him to be an outlandish shirt guy. 
fascinating shirt choice. Children drew on that shirt. It looks like a shirt Deb would wear in Napoleon Dynamite. It's also a shirt that it's it has like children's drawings. One side is a rainbow, the other side is flowers, and it very much looks like a child's drawing. And if you're trying to tell me that this is a grown up show trying to teach adults how to learn to read don't in that fucking shirt. wear a shirt with kids yeah, shit on yeah it's it feels <laughs> feel, this feels very mixed signally also can we just go over the goddamn alphabet real quick and no, why do we you can get to e <laughs> and no further and then there's like you, you know it <laughs> and then and then the first letter they introduced to you for reasons i cannot understand is m well, they go let's start with m not vowels not consonants we're starting with m let's go the thing that's so confusing is the first episode it is just like a preview for the show as a whole. Yes. And I didn't understand that until midway through. I'm like, oh, they're just doing sections from the show to show you what's coming up over the next few episodes. And I thought, well, they must be in the middle of that lesson. But then the second episode we watch is episode two. And that is the start of her lesson. She starts with M. I will say uh, for unintentional but very funny laugh factor for me, uh, when that woman looked dead into the camera and very unemotionally said, this is an M. I something about that really just got to me. <laughs> this is an M. And like I played it a couple times. I was like, this is an M. I'm like, it is. You're nailing this. Well, so she, See it. She was Read the, it. <laughs> <laughs> she was the most uh, like. She was on screen probably the most. Oh, absolutely. So Especially they, episode two. They preview her and another teacher, and I think they must swap episodes. But gotcha. we just ended up watching an episode that was heavy on her. So there are th- those third, all 30 episodes of this theoretically I, exist. I should note that they explain in the first episode what the program is going to be. Mm-hmm. And that is that it's 30 episodes, one day a month, every day. Come back, and by the end of it, you'll learn to read. And then in the middle of that same episode, they're like, hey, we know you're adults with busy schedules, and you might not be able to watch every single episode. So then what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing them airing them every day when there are adults with jobs and kids and other obligations that you know for a fact cannot miss episodes if they want to learn how to read? It's not efficient. Three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You're yeah. going to learn how to read. Maybe, or just... Send these out as VHSs. This, this wants to be a D. This wants to be a VHS. This yeah. should be a yeah, C. This is for a, sure. This is a VHS, and it is kept in the porn box, and that is the way it's <laughs> supposed to be. You learn how to read, and then like you don't tell anyone about that. But also, like, I don't want to judge illiterate people as a whole, but I don't think they're watching PBS. I don't think it's their channel of choice. I don't think they know that this show is going to be on. That is a fair assessment. I will say, like, like when we went through it, and they were like, the people are like, man, I don't know how to read, and it's really fucking hard. I was like, shit, that's just sad. But then they, yeah, but then they put one guy in shadows like he's a mob witness. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that Let's one talk about his oh, voice. So they have, like, is it three or four? Is it four? There's it's the- four. One of them is kind of cocky. Because I think guy? he's the old guy. I think he had, I think he's formerly illiterate. So every now and then he'll he'll just punt he'll put in something he's like you know sometimes I write letters yeah that he's dude, real cocky about that it. dude was wild he was like yo I, I like to write stories so one day when I die people will come across it and I'll be little parts of me left I'm like you're way ahead yeah. of the like, people just trying to read stuff to be in the factory yeah you we need to be you're you don't show up till the end of this lesson you <laughs> yeah. you sh- or like the end of this series you show up you go these are the things you can do because you can read. Such as write ransom notes and yeah. tell stories <laughs> from the grave. Like that's stuff you can do now. That's what it should be, in my opinion. And then there are just two people that just normally want to read. One woman was like, I want to set a good example for my kids. And yep. one guy's just like, I'm trying to get better in life. And then one guy in shadows <laughs> with his voice changed. Be like, sometimes I, I just I try not to let my friends see me try to read things. Like I if there's a menu, I'll just sort of look at it, but I'm not reading it. <laughs> And I'll just say something and hope for the best. <laughs> it's, it's like, dude, Him in sh- he's barely in shadows. You can tell what that guy looks like. Yeah, like you it's could... like the light just burned out. Like, just film, just film. <laughs> it is. God, what what witness protection are you going through? Yeah. Where you're like, my friends can't know I can't read. But also, you but just, also I need to be on a PBS TV he's show. It's not necessary for the show. Do you think he gets paid more or less than the other people telling their truths about not being able to read because he's in secret? Like, I don't know if he got paid at all. It's yeah, I like assume none of them, of them got paid. Oh, oh, that's true. <laughs> Everyone in the show got screwed because they couldn't read the contract. I'm sorry. That's mean. <laughs> I'm for those people not getting screwed. Yeah, I want to be clear. I don't want them to be. But, I, you know, 
Famous Amos, he's got he's got slippery hands. Is no, all I'm famous saying. Famous Amos might have paid them a ton. He went broke. Yeah, she doing adult, like that's the guy that thought he was gonna die way earlier than he did. <laughs> yeah, he's like I got the cookie money. Oh that- yeah, no, the last uh, the last thing on Famous Amos is IMDb so far. So far, 2020 was uh, the Great Cookie Comeback, <laughs> which oh, is a, uh, an hour and 15 minute documentary about uh, nearly homeless uh, Famous Amos. Jesus oh. Christ. Uh, seeing if he can rebuild his cookie empire at 80 years old. Oh my Probably god! Not. Famous Amos, that's a bad movie. Well, we all know we've all we all heard of it. Can cookies. I just say something? Get on cameo. <laughs> yeah, get on cameo. Get on make, cameo, make that Amos. cameo money, buddy. Do famous Amos it up on cameo. Get that shirt. Maybe do with the non reading thing too. Yeah. You know what else? Famous Amos, come on the pod. Come on the pod. Just do a drop off on the pod. Just we can talk about some stuff. We got some TV. You got a TV show. I mean, show. if he has uh, that TV show, you can zoom in. That's okay. Yeah, email us another page. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about another page, Amos. Yeah, uh, dude. We'll famous- do the rest of the episodes of Learn to Read. I don't care. I'll, I'll do learn every to read uh, right dude, now. Well, there's I, only two episodes available. Online. Well, not but can you we, know, Amos, if Amos he hasn't sold them, yeah. you know, surviving homelessness. I don't know if we can. And if we can't, just let me know, and we're going to move forward, and it's going to be a mystery. Can we pull back a little bit, and can we talk about how we got these episodes? They're just on YouTube. They're not just oh, on the channel, YouTube. the channel. The channel is amazing. I, I see wanna, Roserade. I kind of want to leave it alone, because we're going to go back to it a bunch. Okay. okay, just don't look at it yet. But well, we, we're, yeah, but, you will be, like, if you click on the link to this episode, you will see the... Yeah, you will see it, and... Whatever you're doing, Dark Crystal Guy. Icy Roserade. Icy Roserade. <laughs> keep it up forever. You're so weird, and you're so scary, and I love you so much, and I love the people that you follow and promote, and they're so terrifying, and I don't... I think your contribution to art is amazing, and also... <laughs> <word is> contribution? <laughs> let me finish. I can't he read. He can't read. I can't read. <laughs> We and don't have all the episodes. Learn to speak. <laughs> Dude, I got through this hat, Pat Cat, and I was like, I'm doing a fucking deal it right now. You guys talk back to the screen, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just <laughs> like Dora the Explorer. I will say, Brandon did send me a, uh, uh, an audio of him repeating the words. <laughs> yeah, back. I was like, you know what? If you're, I wanted to see what the, because like, I feel like whenever you watch a show that, that you're supposed to interact with, that period of time, where you interact can always be so awkward if you decide not to interact. But if you like, <laughs> if you like buy into the bit, I feel like it's actually a little bit better. It, it is weird with the interaction parts because, like, I'm used to something like Blues Clues or Door the Explorer, mm-hmm. which are four kids where they like, yeah. But when this woman is like, "Do you know what this letter is?" and then there's a pause, and she's like, "Yep, <laughs> that's an S. <laughs> yep. Nailed it." Yeah, wow, that is uh, that is M. Like, also a mountaintop, big word, very big word. Yeah. Maybe Matt, maybe maybe make an easier one for me here. If they really wanted to go with like words that your average viewer of this would know, they should have gone for like mesothelioma. Yeah, obviously, something like that. This is the easy stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, like so, this first episode, they show everything that's going to be in the show, and you really think it's going to be a show like heavy on. Bruce Jenner talking about athletic accomplishments. Yep. Or just working out. But then they also show this guy like, hey, this guy's going to show up and he's got skits. Oh, yeah. We got a skit guy. I love the skit guy. He's like, here's a skit. Here's a skit I have. I'm an R and I take over words. No, greedy R. I'm greedy R. He's and a I mobster. He's, a he's mo- Edward yeah. G. Robinson. Yeah. Is that the per- name I should know? Uh, yeah. She covers. That actor. Uh, that it- He's doing... He's doing that care. He's not that actor. No. Yeah. No. No, no, no. Edward G. Robinson is from like, the dead. 30s. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say that guy's dead. I went to his grave. It's in Brooklyn. Why? Oh, or it's like, a, it like, might be in Queens, but yeah. Uh, like on purpose? Did you like leave a little thing of bourbon like you do for Edgar Allan Poe? Or why did why did you do this? Well, so I so was, was practicing the voice and then he was like, <laughs> am, I doing, am I doing good? <laughs> Hey, hey she? You, like, you like this in the, uh, your mosque, she? Is this upsetting to you? Mosque? No, a mausoleum? Yep, you like you this go. in your mausoleum, <laughs> see? <laughs> so wait, why did you go to his grave? Uh, it- so I was walking home in New York, and I had to walk through a cemetery, and as I was, it was like, hey, you could go see Mae West's grave and Edward G. Robinson. Huh. Like, did they charge admission? No, you could just go up to him. Was it like a dude telling you that? No, it's the Google ghost Maps. Of, ghost of Edward G. Robinson. Oh, okay. I thought that's yeah, like... The, she, you want to see some sweet... What is that called? Is that called a honey trap? When you like trick someone into an area and then you just beat them up? Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, uh, like a honeypot. Yeah, it's like oh, a honey- honeypot is. It's is, a sex thing. It's just like the you're you're leading someone into a trap with uh with the lore being sex. Yeah, but this is like a honeypot. But you just want to see old stars like. You're like, oh, I want to see this grave real bad. Yeah. And then they just hop behind the grave and then buggy. <laughs> and they're like, see, you got mugged. I'm not great at impressions. Um, That's not even an impression. <laughs> <laughs> you realize it was a hypothetical person. You could have done any voice you wanted. I wanted, no, th- my was trying to you do You wanted that. to do Edward, they, you thought that the person setting this trap would have Edward G. Robinson's voice as yeah, well. Yeah, that would be great. Wouldn't that be a nice little you twist know, if you got mugged? You know, I sound just like this guy. Maybe we should set a trap at his grave. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that what you're thinking is happening? That's what it's, no. If you got mugged in front of a grave and the person, and it was a famous grave and the okay. person was doing an impression of the person in the grave, maybe dressed like him, you would be more okay with that mug. Trying to think who I would want to, whose grave I would most. A want Marilyn to. Monroe would Don be nice. Knotts. Don Knotts. Oh, a fun Don one. Knotts would be amazing. Get mugged in front of Don Knotts' grave. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Hand over your body. I can't do one. Yeah, no, he's he's tough to do. He's yeah. like he's very in his throat. Yeah. Ah! But that's cur- that's yeah, that's that's very Muppet. Yeah, it's Muppet. You Kermit's grave. Kermit's still alive. How dare you? Jim Henson's dead. Yeah, that's. Right. I mean, you know what Jim, you know what Kermit said at Jim Henson's funeral, right? Oh, I. I think everyone wept i don't remember specifically though he said nothing oh man sorry that's just that's just who i am on the inside <laughs> you know, i'm full i in a world of glitter i shine like broken glass i'm so shot sorry so learn to uh, read learn. <laughs> fun fact uh burt lair's graveyard is over there and jackie robinson oh that's cool you know jackie robinson also talked like that <laughs> Not a lot of people know that. Yeah, see, I'm going to hit these baseballs right yeah. out of top park. <laughs> I'll be the first black baseball player, see? So, uh, the other, so, <laughs> yeah. We tried to do an impression. No, I was trying to, like, figure out, be like, well, he's not the first black. Okay, listen, there's a lot of yeah, there context were... here. You, we, we know, we know, we know. I'm, in the, I'm in the MLB, see? There you can't keep me out, coppers. It's not only really funny. <laughs> it's just not fun to talk about Jackie Robbins is the first black player in the MLB in 40 years. That's not fun. What? There were some people like, uh, at least more like, like in the late 1800s, there were a couple. There was a couple, but they, yeah. it, once money got involved, that's when they split. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, it's one of those things. That they, they, they The original money ball. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, the original money ball was just keeping African-Americans out of baseball and making them their own league. And that sucks. Uh, so, breeding, fucking fundamental, man. So fundamental. <laughs> but yeah, like, here, here's what's so confusing. They don't really tell you in that first episode that it's going to be. Just like a recap of what the show is going to be as a whole. Did not realize so then it was they an just info show one woman who's going to be giving lessons throughout, and she's me like, "You guys remember our last lesson, right?" You're like, "Wait a minute, what's going on?" Yeah, they the editing wise, they just kind of threw it together as like, "Here's a first episode." The first like. show episode of the show is a clip show. It, it does feel like they were really trying to get up to thirty, and they got to twenty nine really comfortably, and they were yeah. like, "We need one more." And they're like, "What if we like let people know what they're what they're getting into?" Yeah, there's gonna be a woman. Dead eyed saying fat cat at you. <laughs> the, the fat man, the tan uh, man, the fat tan man. The pig on the truck. Was, what was oh, By the way, they did a little So song. they showed pictures of the fat man and Nothing the tan man. Nothing else got pictures. <laughs> right. But they showed the tan man, and then the fat man is just the tan man <laughs> with a pillow yes, under his shirt. Yeah. <laughs> there is a law. They, they didn't want to ha- cast two actors. Um, actors. That was a guy at the <laughs> office. <laughs> yeah. That was just a tan man. I, I like to think they didn't. They weren't using tan before, but then someone came back from the beach, like at the office, and they were like, "Dude, someone's no longer the scan man. We got no. tan man. It's already done. Get out here. We got tea. We're doing tea today." But his defining characteristic is not that he's tan. He doesn't look that tan from the picture. <laughs> he looks like he came straight from a disco. He's like in a leisure suit. Slick back hair, living for New Year's Eve. No, that's that's how he looks. That is how he looks, though. What a, what are my favorite moments? It's not even a moment. It's just when I got what this show was. It was the lady dead eyed talking into the camera, like tan, tan, t. What letter is this? T T. And you're like, got it, nailing it. I'm nailing it, Brandon. You're gonna get this this time. <laughs> <laughs> swear to god and then in the background there was a series of magazines because we that used to be like just an acceptable background for being smart it was like a time magazine and a newsweek and on the cover i read these hypothetically yeah like you guys can't yeah, we're, we're gonna read these but on the cover of one was fucking ronald reagan Ooh. and it was the moment I understood what the fuck this was. Like, I saw Ronald Reagan and I was like, oh, I know what world this is now. 
Like it's a anytime you see Reagan in the background and it's and like you know where you are in time and space. And you know like what America thinks and it's it is the oh, like most... weird post Cold War or like the end of the Cold War kind of like it's the most bootstrappy show that you could fucking imagine. It is the most. Yeah, <laughs> learn to read from this very boring television learn show. Learn to read. It's going to be tough. It's going to be painful. Fuck you. It's not like we're going to pretend it's fun. It's not fun. And I was like, oh, that's what this is. I know what I'm watching they, now. They don't offer a lot of help. They're like, uh, all right, you ready? You've got your pen and paper ready, right? And they've never told you to get the pen and paper. No. Well, and you can they, just do it in your hand. Yeah, dude. but then like, I don't just write on your hand. <laughs> just write on your hand. It's fine. It's fine. This also, I think it's the first just improvising one. real quick. Finger on hand, yeah. They were, and maybe, maybe it's just a different time. We're all delicate snowflakes now. But there's this scene where they're like, "We're gonna talk about tutors," and there's a dude, and he's getting tutored, and he's reading, he's reading real oh, slow. Oh, the creepy close up on his lips. The creepy close, yeah, creepy close up on his lips, and like it is so a for him. You are being. So, and I really mean this, so brave to put yourself out there yeah. in such a vulnerable state. And good for you. I think you think you're doing the right thing. And then there's this tutor, and he's trying to read. And he's like, okay. And he's getting through it. And he goes, you have mud on your feet. And she looks at him and goes, that's not what the word says. I'm like, Jesus Shoes. Christ. Shoes. <laughs> like, that was a moment I was like, I am back in grade school. I am freaking out. Oh, my this, God. This sent you back? This really, like, it was like, oh, no. Like, you ever have a moment in your life and you realize, like, you ever you have to, like, sit down. And you're like, oh, no, this is a therapist thing. I got to do a therapist thing now because of this. Oh, cool. Now I know. My therapist is about to make $30. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Whatever my copay is, you're going to get my copay Send right now. Send an invoice now. to Famous Amos. Yeah. But no, not now. <laughs> he can't pay that. Hey, guys. If you're enjoying the episode, don't forget to subscribe to us on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you download podcasts, whatever illegal streaming site you download this podcast from. Be sure to rate and review and subscribe to it there. Also, check us out on Instagram, me at DPIC Comedy, Brandon at Brandon Gorin, and Daniel at Daniel F. Crow. Also, I have a special out on YouTube called Goblin King. Also, I'll be posting a bunch of clips and stuff on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and stuff. So follow me at LickGrandma69 and enjoy everybody else's stuff and check them out and enjoy the rest of the episode. So I'm just trying to think, like, in the, in the first episode, everything that they promised the show was going to be. Okay. Bruce Jenner highlights. Yes. Yeah. Wisdom from Famous Amos. Yes. Skits. Yes. Uh, people teaching you to read. Yes. Interviews with people who don't know how to read. Yes. Information about where to find uh, tutors or other sort of help. Mm-hmm. Interviews with the bookman, a guy who used to be illiterate that delivers books and magazines. Never fucking shows Never up. Never shows up that and we also, saw. also, slight difference. I want to I correct okay, you a little bit. because I was like, I don't remember the bookman. The bookman? Amos throws it in at the end. He's like, thanks for joining us. Also, we're going to introduce from the bookman. He <laughs> delivers books and magazines. He used to be illiterate. Now he's not. Now he learns how to, he reads the things he delivers. All right. Thanks. Bye. Credits. I rewatched that. He is learning how to read he's with learning. you. Okay. So he is, he's like your surrogate and he cannot read on a good level yet. And he's about to read. He's like doing the same things as you. So he's like your buddy. So you have the book man, the Mr. Letter, the dead eyed woman and Jenner and famous Amos. The worst group of Batman villains. Then then we get to the (laughs) second episode, which is the only other episode we can find. And which is fine because no one rated any episodes on IMDb. Yeah. So we just watch episode two in the regular. (laughs) But then when you actually watch it, here's what's in that episode. A woman slowly telling you how to pronounce three letter words. Yep. And one rap. And like a half a sketch for like a second. Yeah. Like a dude comes out and he's like, I'm the letter T. Oh no, I'm I'm a vowel. And I'm like, what's a vowel? This is a funny joke. And then he fucking leaves and you're like, what? No, but a a woman raps after him. Don't you remember that? Yeah, dude, it's a good, it's a good, it's a yeah. solid eighties rap. Yeah. We'll put it in. <laughs> okay. And so just remember this little tip from the letterman. See, say, hear, and read. When you look at a word, just take it letter by letter. Sound it out, you'll understand it better. Just see it, say it, hear it, read it. Remember this rule whenever you need it. See, say, hear, read. Keep on trying, you're going to succeed. Just see, say, hear, read. The words will get easier. Yes, indeed. Just see, say, hear, read. See, say, hear, read. Just see, say, 
hear and read. Eat your heart out, Grandmaster Flash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a sketch in the second episode. They were no, doing, like, the, that the, song. the sketch guy shows up twice. He does his little bit, and then the woman raps, and that's him. And then later in the middle, it's a break of the monotony of this woman going, cat, tan, cigarettes, or whatever. <laughs> they <laughs> they, the they break it up with him cigarettes. another song with the sketch guy, which yeah. is like, the hot pig on the flatbed truck. Yep. And I, uh, you know, I've done a handful of episodes with y'all, and some of them I really like because I feel like there is a, a, a thing that we're looking for, and what we're doing is really proud, and like we're trying to suss out information from things that failed. And then sometimes I'm I'm watching a YouTube video of a woman reading at me <laughs> at work. And like other people can see what I'm watching. <laughs> and like I have stuff I gotta do. Like I have I have things on my list today, but I have to make time <laughs> to watch this. And I'm just trying to eat lunch and I'm like, cat, cat. And like I share an office <laughs> so other people can walk in and I have to, and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just watching this thing. And I'm, it's a podcast. <laughs> You have this real moment, like what? What is my life? Well, like what? Did, did it help you learn to read? You can go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you can go. You can fuck. That would be funny if Brandon, like a week from now, is just like, you know what? It did help. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, I knew okay. how to read before, okay. but it was always a struggle. And now, <laughs> here's the thing: like other people who do stand up and who do performance, I am fascinated by language and the and like also fascinated by sometimes the arbitrariness of language and it almost it almost scratches that itch it doesn't but it almost is like we're going to talk about the alphabet the alphabet is in a certain certain order the reason the alphabet is in that order is because someone fucking told you that's the only reason the alphabet is in that order right and that's such yeah. a weird thing to think it's literally called alpha bet a B. That's what it's called. And we all agreed Whoa, on it. Oh man. Yeah, dude. I'm so fucking high right now. Uh Panasonic. I fucking nailed it. I was so scared. <laughs> um But like I, That's it, called memory. That wasn't it, reading. Yeah. And I'm and I'm very dyslexic. So I I spent a lot of time with words and sort of reading about dyslexia and also having a lot of trouble reading. And I watched a lot of videos like this. So like I'm like, oh my god, I'm back. And like, <laughs> oh no, I'm back at second grade. Yeah, like oh god, cat, Pat, Matt, hooked on phonics. Fuck you, fuck you. Spell with ph. But that's yeah, because this Philly. is like they made a thing that's like muzzy but less interesting. Um, God, turn the page is what I want to see so bad. Another page. Turn another page. Um, not right. Just another page. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong twice. But like it, it, it is. I was all like it was the worst thing for me because like I kind of like the music. I was almost. I wish it. Listen, if, if we've had a couple of these, if you make some like cool vaporwave, please take this these two episodes and turn it into like some interest, something interesting. This and talismans. Tones and Talismans is a goddamn masterpiece. No, I think he means the music. Just, the music. He just oh, means yeah. the two episodes from this. But, but yes. Like, oh, I, sorry. Yeah. I like Tones and Talismans. Like, I was also thinking about Tones and Talismans and how much I did legitimately like it. I think some kids might have remembered Dewey Decimal Things from that show, but I can't imagine anyone learned to read from this. I couldn't. <laughs> I, I couldn't help but feel talked down to. In the, oh, yeah, they were definitely talked down to. Yeah. Because the production department is PBS Intellectuals. Yeah. And Famous Amos. Yeah. <laughs> famous went in... I'm sorry, his name is Amos. Amos. <laughs> Am, Amos. Famous. Yeah. Please call me Famous. Amos was my father. <laughs> I'll just go by Famous. Famous went in with the best intentions. He really did. Yeah. I mean, every, it is, it is though, it is a show of real good intentions throughout but and just I, I, sesame street would be better if you need to learn to read no I, question you'd have i've heard about illiterate adults who learn from sesame street i, could, I would get it because i would enjoy myself yeah like sesame street is a good show yeah this is like and like and it and it's the thing is like it is for adults they do adult things but then every once in a while they're like amos is wearing a stupid fucking kid shirt there's like a like a like a sketch that's just there that isn't fun or funny and like either 
be completely cut and dry and just be like, we're not doing jokes. You don't give a fuck about Bruce Jenner. Fucking who's gone from who, the second episode? One she, just gone there and for a second. There's sprinting. A lot of focus in the first episode is dedicated to Bruce Jenner uh, to the point where I'm surprised he doesn't show you his fucking gold medals. He's like, so I made these clunk clunk on the yeah. table. <laughs> what the fuck have you done? Go work in a factory Do where you, you can Caitlyn read. Caitlyn Jenner remembers this show. No, no. But I will say something. Caitlyn Jenner should have started in a show called Learn to Drive. Am I right? Boom! Boom! Bo. 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 Knocked it out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> God. That lady sucks. She's such a bad lady. She's did the so did the show change your opinion? No, her? no, it didn't. Like I just me no. <laughs> like I want to know what was going through. Like was just Amos asked him. Probably. Yeah, that's the only thing that makes sense. But also, I'm willing to bet you know good amount of money for PBS and the minimal work. I guess. I mean, maybe they they. I can't imagine it's real money for it's PBS. No, but what, it wasn't like. Bruce Jenner was doing things other than just random endorsements. That was the job. Yeah, that's fair. Showing up wherever someone would give you five thousand dollars or whatever. Yeah, that was probably a nice dinner. You know what I mean? That was like a nice steak dinner. Yeah. And like, yeah, famous Amos took him out to a nice steak dinner. He's like, I'll do it. So, oh, speaking of, uh, I looked up uh, tracks. The other thing famous Amos was in because I, I was like, I, that was the only one I hadn't heard of in uh-huh. that group. I thought you just saw all the footage of the decathlon and you were like, let me look up what a track is. <laughs> <laughs> well, they start at different points. Well, oh, it's because it's, <laughs> oh, okay, because they're how close they are to the circle. Fascinating. Yeah, Whoa. yeah dude. Uh, so, tracks, T R A X X, has battled his way through El Salvador, the Middle East, and Nicaragua, spitting lead with two handed good grace. He decides to retire to a life of baking designer cookies. <laughs> oh, holy fuck, dude. Find another thing. Hey, hey. Dude, <laughs> sell your life rights as like make a biopic about you being the first black agent at CAA. Yeah, w- yeah. That's three seasons on stars. Easy. Sterling K. Brown. Yeah. He really Amos, my guy, be come on the pod. <laughs> he's 85 years old. He doesn't know what a podcast. He he no, he's very hip. He's famous. He's Amos. famous. <laughs> but like, come on the pod and like, there are other parts of your life than the cookie part. You've done other things, buddy. And like, just you let it go, man. Let the cookie thing go. <laughs> you know what is weird about him? Do you want to say it? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, I don't know what you're going to say. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Oh, no, that wasn't what I was going to say. Yeah, no. What I was going to say is he looks like a LeVar Burton beaten down by the world. <laughs> he really does. Like, imagine watching this back to back with Reading Rainbow, and you'd be like, "What happened?" <laughs> Learn to read in Reading Rainbow. Very he, different. Yeah. He's, he does. He does. He looks like an exhausted Levar Liberton. Like, yeah. this is just like, here's some letters. I'm Jordy ha- Love, forget about it. Here it is. Are you having fun yet? <sighs> <laughs> We barely talked about the second episode. We can go in. Let's do what, this. What else happened in the second episode? We barely touched on them talking about how you can work at a factory. Okay, we need to talk about the factory. You're yeah. right. I've talked, I brought up the factory a couple brought times. Brought up, but you didn't go in depth. Okay, well, let's, get, let's talk about the factory. Because they're like, okay, guys, here's the thing. We can teach a fat, we can teach a cat, and all these other words, but you're going to be in these other settings where they're going to be words specifically only in these environments. <laughs> yeah. And so you're going to need to know those words for when you get these menial labor factory jobs. I do like how they were they they specifically point out and I am unsure why that there are two bulletin boards. One, and this is how nice the factory is, is they have a bulletin board that is a TV and that TV tells you about world events, which means that on the factory you're going to find out like the the first war in Iraq is happening. Yeah, you know, I, like, yeah, I wish this had come out like more recently and there was some guy who was like <laughs> You know, it was rough having to hear about 9-11 secondhand. <laughs> wish, wish I could have read about it instead. <laughs> Eric, could you? Oh, no, that's such a sad visual. It's like, learn to read, and it's all these people weeping because 9-11 is happening. In this What's morning. going on? What's going on? <laughs> where'd the smoke come from? I see, but where'd it come from? <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry. I'm, it's very upsetting. That's not a... Oh, we should. And then the other ones, like, there's also smaller billboards where you can post about, like, your family and engagements, and you don't want to miss anything out. And you also don't want to miss your union. I'm like, that rules. More union talk, please. That's awesome. It's also... They're, like, safety signs. They're like, this yeah. is the word caution. And yeah. the factory... You'll never encounter the word caution anywhere else. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like, I'm like, safety shows up. That's a word yeah. around... Manufacturing is even a word around. Yeah. That's yeah. It's it's sort of like Apple. You're gonna see the word Apple. You're gonna be able to do that one. But it's indicative of they never expect anyone watching the show to read a book. That They're is only true. showing them like you're gonna need to read so that you don't fall in a pit at your factory job. I have to point it out. They there are two things that they do bring up that 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 contradicts that just a little bit. One is sometimes the managers at the factory are so gosh darn nice they're gonna give you reading glasses. They, mm, they, they say, that. say that, yeah. And the other one, well, on the list of things that you can do, they do go, so you can read and you can re- you can read like signs. That's helpful. You can read to your kids. That's nice. And you can read the Bible. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's the only book they bring up. That's a bit. That's a hard. I as someone who, who has read the Bible exactly once and was very young when he did it. Uh, not young, but like 18, 19. So like very determined to do it to prove a point. Um, that's a hard. That's a hard read. That's the sort of book where, yeah. like, if you learn to read it and you're like, "Let me break it in by reading the Bible first things," you'd be like, "I'm gonna unlearn reading." <laughs> like, I got in the beginning, and then it's real difficult in all these begats. Yeah. Like, there's a whole yeah. There's a it's like in the beginning, and then like a story sort of happens, and then there's just a fucking list. Oh, I, for a while, and there's a lot of names you're not prepared for for your <laughs> first book. <laughs> There's Z's that shouldn't be in places. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say this: like there, Jebediah. That's an easy one from the first book. That's one of the easy ones. Yeah, Zacchaeus. And, yeah, that's. It's like it's like you've uh, been playing easy mode Guitar Hero, and they're me like you're ready for through the fire and the flames on expert. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is this book difficult to read, but also it's boring. pretty boring. It's and it, fucking huge. Here's the thing. I, I, I guess if you have the uh, testament and fortitude to make it through 30 episodes of Learn to Read, <laughs> yeah. you can probably- you cleared your <laughs> schedule for an entire <laughs> month. I'm actually, I read the Bible in between uh, chapter, in between uh, uh, shows. Yeah, dude, start easy. So maybe like you like want to learn the joys of Dr. Seuss or like, and I know like Harry Potter is not around at that time. But like maybe you wanted some like some Peter Rabbit first, but you're jumping in with the, the Bible. Bible or give them something that's relevant to their lives, like the jungle. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're working at the factory. Yep, yep. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I wish they had recommended the Quran. If if you if you're gonna <laughs> you did earlier mentioning mosques out of nowhere. <laughs> if Fam- famous dead Muslim Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> Hey, yeah, she I want you hot. She okay, I was gonna kid, Hey, I, I can't I can't do that. I I'm saying assalamu alaikum, but I'm doing it in the accent, okay? Okay. Assalamu alaikum, she that, that's actually really cool. That guy whoever that guy is, I like that guy. That guy's pretty neat. I pray five times a day, she <laughs> but like listen, if you're gonna read Edward G. Ramadan. <laughs> it's not great, but I wanted to no, say it's it. good. It's great. That's lovely. I Thanks. love it. Thanks. If you're gonna if you're gonna Yeah, be- she your pilots get out of here. I'm taking over this plane. Too far, too, too far, far, too far. Dave, too no. far. David, no. Cut it, cut it, cut it. We're against that. <laughs> no one in the room is happy about it, okay? Uh, oh, one person in the room is happy about it. <laughs> we wanted to make him like a good he's a gangster. He's like a, like a British gangster. It never occurred to me. Does the G stand for gangster? No, it's oh. uh, it's. Uh, I weirdly talked about Edward G. Robinson yesterday. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then this reference showed up out of nowhere. <laughs> the other like last we recorded, we talked about Beretta at length. I didn't think it was going to get worse than that. <laughs> but here we are talking about Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> Uh, really? so the G yeah, is stands for because he's Jewish. Uh, oh, the G stands, stands for, for Jewish. Jewish. I learned a lot from this reading <laughs> book, uh, for this reading show. I don't love the books you're reading, buddy. <laughs> the books you're reading are making me real nervous. But no, it's like it's yeah, it's just he's uh, it's his like original last name. Because uh, yeah, because he didn't want to be like is you know a very Jewish last name. A lot yeah. of people changed their names in the twenties and thirties. Yeah, that that sucked. I don't like that we had to do that. That was a bummer. Anyway. This show, I just want to say, if you're going to read the Bible, here's my suggestion. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> just, just start 
with the New Testament and don't even bother with Revelations. Just just quit when Jesus goes out and he comes back. Oh, Revelations is fun though. That's no, because it gets you weird and it's hard. Revelations is harder than you think. Oh it's no, also... I'm hard when I read it. <laughs> Boo. <Yeah. laughs> Hey, listen, that whore of Babylon's not going to fuck herself. She will, actually. That's kind of her whole thing. You've really fallen off a cliff in the middle of this, this is episode, so David. Weird. You're getting really weird, You're dude. You're costing us all of our sponsors. Yeah. Because <laughs> I got hard for the whore of Babylon. Yeah, this is, this is, disgusting. This is weird. I don't... Eight, famous Amos is going to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. We almost had fa- Famous Amos <laughs> on the show. <laughs> He's just... like, all right, that Edward G. Robinson's a little in bad taste. Can I and just then... say... <laughs> Just go by Amos. Who else are we confusing you with? They, yeah, it rhymes. you are it the rhymes. most famous Amos. <laughs> Amos Lee. Uh, he's still the most famous Amos. Yeah, I guess Amos from Amos and Andy, but I, that, he's fictional. I I will stand. I stand by the statement. I do think that he should. The pe- people should be like, "Hello, I'm famous Amos," and then he goes, "Please do not call me Amos. Amos is my father." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what other, what other words rhyme with famous and Amos? Well, there's the obvious one that I'm not going to say because he's listening. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, probably Penis likes Amos? Joke. Yes, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you didn't have to ask it like a question. I well, I didn't. I didn't know if that's what he was going but for. But also, like, I, I love his intro because after <laughs> ten straight minutes of, and that's how I won the gold medal. <laughs> he comes on screen, he's like, "Hi, I'm Wally, famous Amos," and then it pops up on screen, and says, <laughs> "Wally, famous Amos." He goes, "You might know me from Cookies." <laughs> <laughs> that was a wonderful moment for me because he he went. Hey, I'm Wally, famous Amos. And I went, oh, that's weird. Like, the cookie guy is, like, from cookies. I'm like, shit, you're real? <laughs> it, is, like, it, is, it is, like, suddenly the woman from the Land of Lakes. Yeah. <laughs> just like, you guys want to learn math? <laughs> Aunt Jemima teaches geography. The Jolly yeah. Green Giant is just like, hey, dude. Listen, listen, when I'm not kicking it at home with my wife, Auntie Anne, <laughs> <laughs> I'm teaching adults how to read. <laughs> I would have gone with Mrs. Fields, but we know she has a different last name already. <laughs> oh, it's it's Ann Amos. Yeah, it's possible. Auntie Ann Amos. So yeah, yeah. triple A. Yeah, we can. I don't know. MC what else. Hammer could have been one of famous Amos's clients. You could have been. I brought that up because of a factoid about Mrs. Fields that I realized uh, I only went through in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, <laughs> well, that, that's, what it, Sorry. that's what happened. I watched us all. We all just stopped and looked. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you said yeah. a thing in your head. <laughs> so in the 1970s, at the same time, uh, MC Hammer was the bat boy for the Oakland A's while Mrs. Fields was a ball girl. I knew that. that yeah. Thing. That's a fact. That's she wasn't Mrs. Fields at the time, obviously. She was a teenage girl. She wasn't married, but. Was, wait, was that She was Miss Fields. He yeah. earned the nickname Hammer while being the Bat Boy. Oh, that because rules! Because he looks like Hank Aaron. They said. Oh, I so see. They that. called him Hammer. Yeah, I don't. I don't not see that. And so that's why I brought up MC Hammer out of nowhere. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I should. I should say my thoughts on the podcast. <laughs> I keep. I keep thinking. I. I want to do a podcast where we just sit in silence and just kind of look at each other for a little bit, and just see if that's an emotionally strong decision. Um, also, uh, I think it'll be easy to fake. Let's do it right now. Thrilling, thrilling listening to that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of idea. This. What are you talking about? Just... Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have any more to say about this dumb reading show. It was very much, we just watched a woman. Well, okay. Teach I, us short letters. Yeah, and then I the would guy say sang. about 25 minutes of the 28 minutes of the second episode are just that woman going, uh, you know, truck. See it, read it. <laughs> After every word she brings up, ominously, threateningly. <laughs> well, she'll say, I, I don't know if she's threatening as much as she's just dead behind the eyes. Yeah, they really need someone that's enthusiastically teaching you. I want someone who, who I, I really, she seems to hate, like, you want someone who loves reading and yeah. she seems to hate you. She doesn't seem like, she she, clearly, she loves reading the way a lot of people like animals and not people. She mm. seems to clearly know her stuff, but hate teaching. Yeah. She knows her stuff. Yeah. She clearly knows truck. Well, I'm just saying, like, she definitely has a degree. She went to school for this. Okay. I thought you were just saying, like, she knew the material. I'm (laughs) sure she has a degree where she learned the methods to teach people how to read. What a good way to quietly insult someone. I will I'll say this. I bet that dude knows all his letters. It's such a good (laughs) such a good mean. I uh, say something nice about him. Bet he knows all his letters. You're like, wow, that's that's rough. Yep, bottom. 
But yeah, I, okay, so I think this is an, a show where we can definitively say the later episodes do not improve on the pilot because the pilot's kind of a wild ride. Pilot's fun. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's guys in shadow. There's a dumb sketch with a mobster. There's a little bit of learning to read. There's there's Amos being like, I'm the cookie guy. And then the second episode is just her going, ball. <laughs> See it? Read it. And then anchor words. Yeah. Yeah. So you think ma- mountains look like, ma- like, M looks like a mountain, so you know that it starts, that it's an M sound. S looks like a snake. We did not, they didn't open with vowels or consonants. They did not tell you about vowels or consonants. Yeah. So, I guess is it like if you're an adult that doesn't know how to read, you kind of know a little bit of it. No, they from... assume you do, but what if you don't know any of it? They don't know how. That's the big problem is they don't know where your reading level is in any way, well, shape, but or it's, form. And it's reading based. It's not ESL. It's not English as a second language. No, no that's yeah. the other thing is it is English for English. If it was not, I would be much more kind to it. But it's English for English, and it's uh, and it just starts at like it starts in the middle of an idea about reading without giving you like any like like we are starting with m and then we're going to s and then we're going to like t and like it's not near anything it's just like you will learn these fucking words <laughs> okay i mean yeah it is it it they it i don't know it, maybe they picked it out maybe there is a reason for why they picked it out if anyone here is in education because they're giving you the letters to spell <laughs> famous amos <laughs> that's how they start you off <laughs> they're like because literally it's like f m s and then they throw an a i'm like what's going on here i this didn't propaganda put, I, I did not put that together <laughs> Oh my god! He wants everybody to read, so they'll read his name. So, yeah, pretty much. Dude, what this we... is the guy that gave himself the designation famous. <laughs> yeah, I guess you don't get you get. I hope he didn't yeah. give himself that nickname. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, Daniel. What would you do to improve the show? What show would you recommend? <laughs> okay. It, so the first episode, you kind of need to keep that tone because there's other stuff happening. And it's the second episode is so dull that if I need to learn how to read, I'm bailing. <laughs> it's not worth wa- like messing up my schedule to watch this every day for a month. I don't think it's going to help because it's not very helpful. They need to introduce concepts beyond the letter M before just throwing <laughs> you in the deep end. Yeah, yeah I really want some con- like like I know we get weird about like new math and stuff, but like that's trying to like not just have root wrote route root wrote me- memorization are you having a stroke wrote <laughs> wrote uh wrote memorization like i want to go past like i want to go past wrote memorization <laughs> i love how many words we've messed up on the yeah. learn to read podcast <laughs> <laughs> uh for a show to recommend panasonic yeah. reading rainbow <laughs> there you go uh, butterfly in Watch the sky reading rainbow people uh brandon how would you improve the show I think I think it needs I think I would make it a lot I wouldn't take everything fun out of it and just have the work part. You're out of your mind. <laughs> no. You're actually no, out of your mind. Like, I don't need the gangster just show up and be like okay we're going to wor- lear- wor- learn some letters and like have it cuz then it would take half as much time. I don't need a fucking 5 minute sketch. I don't need fucking famous Amos talking to me. I don't need famous Amos DJing words. You know what I mean? Just go, okay, we're going to do the words like just the lady, 15 just minutes, the lady. not a half hour, in and out, 15 minutes a day. That is true. Like, Famous Name is introducing is like one of those stand-up shows where like a celebrity that doesn't do stand-up does five minutes up top. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly so, like, that. Well, if Shaq thinks they're funny, <laughs> so do I. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Famous Amos can read, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I will not. But can he teach you how to read? I That's re- fair. I don't I, think he can. Yeah. I, I was really convinced you were like, to be fair, Shaq, pretty solid stand-up. He's not bad. <laughs> I've not Shaq seen his can't his read. Stuff. I bet I bet it's fine. I bet it's storytelling and it's fine. Shaq yeah. can read. Shaq has a doctorate. Yeah, I'm, I, I know Shaq can read. He has a doctorate, okay? okay. Honestly, I would improve this by adding Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> I know he wasn't known yet, but if if Sha- if like a giant sixteen year old showed up in this show, I was like, "Learn how to read, or I'll find you." He'd be like, "I'm learning how to read." <laughs> uh, and then you recommend a show, or yeah, you know what? Just Shaq versus. <laughs> recommend the show Shaq versus. 
It was like a game show. <laughs> Sorry, only Shaq from about 15 years ago. I'm going to recommend Sesame Street. No, Shaq versus. <laughs> I'm going to recommend Shaq versus. Please, can you put the knife down now? <laughs> I'm so scared. Can you say the word knife? Can you spell the word knife? That's a tough and one. I am. No. Slack. <laughs> okay. Uh, how I'd improve the episode. Uh, Sif, famous Amos, Kathleen King, founder of Tate's Cookies. That's a way less successful cookie company. Yeah, but they're better. It's a good. Co- Tate's Cookies. Might get the Girl Scouts. But and honestly, imagine if a bunch of Girl Scouts <laughs> open and be like, "Hey, adults, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I know how to read. Why can't you?" This is how we spell samosas. <laughs> <laughs> Tagalogs. What are the heart? What are what? Are, I guess samosas is probably the hardest. Dosi dos. Dosi dos. Yeah. Is this no? Dosi dos is easy. That's it's got the, dashes. Yeah, you think you you could put together a dash. You got to you got to introduce the concept of dashes. You think that's throwing people off? Yeah. Is this Samoas? I think. I think. I think Did I say Samosas? Well, here's yeah. the thing. In, uh, certain, <laughs> in certain areas, they go by different names. Okay. I know we're not supposed to call it that anymore. I what? think that's one of the ones we changed. Because it is a people. Oh. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just, Maybe it's, that's why it changed to Samosas. I, it Maybe. I don't think it's that, though. I don't think they would change it to something that sounded so close. I have no idea. So what do you re- recommend? Uh, I'm going to recommend uh, Miss America. Uh, Mrs. America. It's a really good show. It's on FX. None of people saw it. It's about women's rights. Can and, anyone in it read? Uh, yeah, it's about a lot of adults uh, reading about feminism. Hey, and it, it's, if you can't read, we're not making fun of you. Just so you know, and like you're I'm making, making fun, fun of you. We're making fun of this show for being terrible at teaching people to yeah, read. It's cool. I ain't mad. There are numerous resources if you. Well, I was about to say Google, but um, <laughs> watch. If you ask okay. a friend, yeah, watch, ask I, a friend to. Do, can you teach me how to read? I want, on I want anyone illiterate to know that you can make a change. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm for Wait, that. Okay, just but put, don't ask Famous Amos for help. <laughs> Unless you want to come on the pod. Put me near your phone. Hey, Google, open YouTube how to read. <laughs> yeah. Sesame Street. There we go. There you go. It's good. It's a good show. They'll it's have good. references for adults. Yeah, it's great. Guys, watch Sesame Street. Bye. <laughs>